Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Sam back with another video. Just got a little tune to play for you. It goes like this. All right, guys, what's up? Sam here, back with another video. We got some crazy stuff to talk about today. A rumor that I am I'm really excited for because I've, I've been looking for this for the past lifetime. The next iMac is gonna look something like this, which is not something we can often say about concepts. We have a load of details on that, but even more good news because also coming at WWDC is Apple's transition to ARM-based Macs. They're actually taking human limbs and attaching them to Macs, which is you know kind of gonna be, no, I'm joking. It's essentially gonna be Apple switching from Intel to their own chips that are more powerful, more efficient, pretty much better in every way. Plus, Apple just dropped some new summer colors and cases and bands, and the Apple Card is uh, getting more interest-free stuff, which will actually tie into some of the stories today. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. You know the drill, you know what you like, and uh, hit subscribe for more. Let's go ahead and get started. But first, something really serious. Black Lives Matter, which is something that I have not been vocal enough about in the past, and I, I we gotta change that. We, we've gotta change this mentality that we can only talk about tech, and entertainment, and that nothing can ever be serious. There is a systematic problem, not only in America, but in the world where black and brown people are not treated like everybody else. I don't see that as a surprise. I don't say that like it's a shock. I say that we haven't talked about it in the past and we gotta start talking about it now. If you're in the all lives matter crowd, yeah, you're right, all lives do matter. But if we acted like all lives matter, then we wouldn't need Black Lives Matter as a movement because we're not treating black people like they matter. So I started a fundraiser and I wanna get to $1,000. I've already donated myself. I want you guys to jump in to support the NAACP. They're an organization that have been fighting for the rights of black and brown people and all people, by the way, uh, forever for civil liberties and equality. So we're gonna start speaking up. We're gonna start marching. We're gonna start protesting. We're gonna start donating and acting like this is a priority because it is a priority. Now, first up for the iMac. This guy right here, it is going to be out of this world. According to Sonny Dixon over on Twitter, it's gonna be insane. Now, normally when I show you a concept like this, it's like, oh, like this is what somebody envisions it could look like. But mainly it's like what our hearts want and not what the actual rumors have been saying. That is not true this time. I think this is actually a pretty close representation of what Apple is gonna be availing on June 22nd. So the new iMac is going to have an iPad Pro-like design. What? I thought that was only coming to the iPhone 12 this year. Apparently it's coming to the iMac and holy cow, that's an exciting rumor by itself. And going along with that, the new iMac is gonna have slimmer bezels, which Dixon says can be compared to the Pro Display XDR. Just for brevity's sake, let's take a quick look at the Pro Display XDR, which I think is like the best looking display ever. Those bezels are really, really thin. So this is not going to be, it seems like a subtle reduction similar to like the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Like this is going to be the iMac redesign that we've been saving up money for and selling a couple body parts for. And normally I'd be like, okay, but what else is it gonna have? But this time I'm in. I am sold on this iMac on the basis of how it's going to look. And I'm just really hoping that this actually happens. The T2 chip is gonna be inside alongside an AMD Navi GPU, which should make this pretty good. One of the more powerful graphical updates for the iMac in recent history. And it seems like the SSD is gonna be standard. You know how we've not only had the spinning disc like you know, 5400 or 7200 RPM, like very, very old early 2000s technology stuck in these iMacs. And then the Fusion Drive is a combination of both, which is also trash. The Fusion Drive is said to be going away. So it seems like Apple is finally, finally gonna be switching to SSD. Like they have on every other computer, an iPhone and iPad. The iMac has just randomly stayed with those options. Uh, Sunny is about 60% accurate based on what I calculated. Probably more accurate in the past when the dude was leaking like the iPhone 5, 5C, 6, 6S, and 7 iPhone housings before anybody had seen them. Uh, recently, the track record's gotten a bit more skeptical, a bit more sketchy, but I'm believing this one because it lines up with pretty much everything else we've heard. John Prosser has reported that new iMacs are ready. Uh, Love to Dream said that new iMacs are coming soon. Coinex, the number one record holder on my sites for most accurate Apple rumors, said a new iMac was ready back in February or March, and Mark Gurman says a new iMac is coming. I mean, everything is pointing to an iMac soon, and WWDC, where Apple's gonna coincidentally be showing off new Mac software, would be the perfect place to debut it. Pricing, we have no idea about the new iMac, but I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that it's not gonna go up substantially because 
you know, we're kind of in a recession right now here in the US. But that is not the only news we got. Mark Gurman fresh today with a report about Apple's transition to AR and Max, which is not something I've, I've talked about a lot here just because I get it talking about processors, like it's not the most interesting thing for me. But to sum it up, this is a big deal because for the past, what, 15 some odd years, Apple's been using Intel chips in Mac computers. So anytime you buy a Mac, it's got an Intel made and designed and developed chip. But Apple is gonna be switching just like on the iPhone, now they have the A series processors. They're gonna be doing that on the Mac. So Apple designed CPUs and GPUs are also coming. We're apparently gonna be hearing about this on stage at WWDC this year, which is online. I still don't know how that's gonna play out. Now Apple's switching to their own chips, which means that they can really fine tune everything they want, the efficiency, the power, the graphical performance in the GPUs. It's all gonna be more finely tailored, just like the amazing gains in performance they've gotten on the iPhone with the A-series chips. Man, I can't wait to see what we get on the Mac. I mean, German says that for AI-powered tasks, like things could go through the roof. Eventually, one day, all of Apple's Macs will include ARM chips, but the first ones for consumers actually will not be shipping until 2021. So. You know, it's exciting that this is happening, but know that this is just Apple announcing it, just like how they announced iOS 14 and it's available for developers. Some developers will likely be able to get their hands on this new Apple design chip hardware, but for us, we gotta wait till sometime in the next year. So still a bit a ways away before we can go hands-on. Next up, just a few hours ago, Apple dropped iOS 13.6. Beta 2 and uh, the versions are just to the point where I don't even care anymore. Apple could come out tomorrow and be like, oh, iOS 14.1 is out. And you'd be like, oh, okay, guess it's just Tuesday. The newest update today is like the follow-up to 13.5.5 beta 1. And I just want to show you a couple of these things really quick because there really wasn't a lot new. Inside of news preferences, there's this new page right here, which talks about newsletters and privacy and then renames just the normal privacy policy for Apple News to Apple News and privacy. Uh, inside of the health app, there's a new page for symptoms. So you can actually look here and then it, it gives you a whole other page of like a bunch of things that you can check off or add data to, which is pretty nice. It's a handy feature. But perhaps the biggest change was inside of settings. You can now automatically set your iPhone to download and install updates so you won't have to get consent every time. Like if you just want hands off for updating your phone, you never wanna have to worry about it. Turn these two on once 13.6 drops. I can't, why am I saying 30.6? That just sounds wrong. And you won't have to worry about updates. So those are the main changes we found. All the changes that I found, I, I literally went line by line through the settings app. Didn't find anything else. So that's the state of iOS right now. A real whirlwind and I'm lost in it. Next up guys, I can't believe there wasn't more insane hype around this, but Apple just dropped new products this week and everybody's sitting here like it's okay. Nothing's okay. Apple dropped new products and no, nobody really cared. Gotcha. No, they didn't. Well, I mean, they did, but like not anything substantial. They dropped some new summer colors for Apple Watch bands and iPhone cases. Uh, among the colors of which I will list, is vitamin C. They're taking advantage of us during the pandemic. If they call it vitamin C and it's orange, maybe the iPhone case will protect us from the virus. Who knows? I'm just saying what's true. Linen blue, sea foam, coastal gray, and vitamin C are the colors for the sport bands. And then you get everything but coastal gray on the iPhone case. Here's a nice little graphic I put together. Are you guys picking up any of these? They're all right, but I, I'm a fan of, of like Rhino Shield cases. This part is not sponsored, this is what I use over Apple's first party cases, but they are nice if you like a lot of colors. And you know, earlier we were joking about the cost of some new products, but Apple is actually coming up with the solution so that you don't have to sell, you know, one organ at once. That heart, cut that little baby up in 12 incremental pieces. Mark Gurman reported that in the coming weeks, we don't have an exact launch for this though, Apple is gonna be expanding the iPhone interest-free payments with Apple Card to a bunch of other Apple products. So iPad, Mac, Apple Pencil, iPad keyboard, Pro Display XDR as well. You're gonna be getting 12 months of interest-free financing. And then for AirPods, Apple TV, and the HomePod, you're getting six months free, uh, which makes sense. Like those are all much, much lower cost products. I mean, if you're splitting the most expensive one of those products up over six months, it, like 12 months would be like a few dollars a month, you know? So that seems pretty fair to me. But let's say you're out of work and you wanna buy some new products. Uh, you could actually trade in one of your old products soon at an Apple store. Apple's gonna be accepting Mac trade-ins, which I believe is the first time they've ever done this. They've done iPhone trade-ins for a very long time, but sometime next week, German is telling us that there is going to be Mac trade-in in store. I mean, amid a pandemic, not sure this is the greatest idea, but it's happening. 
happening and you might be able to get some extra cash. We we just don't know how much cash. Hopefully the trade values are decent. All right, guys, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe for more. Please, please donate. Help support the NWACP right now if you can, and that'd be fantastic. Love you guys. You're the best. All right, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.